everybody, my name is Lisette Lagunas and this is my week 3 presentation for MPA 540. Let's get started. This week we will be discussing compensation and the way that it affects the relationship between the organization and the subordinate. It is also really important to realize that compensation can also have an impact on various aspects of the individual's um, involvement in the organization. It can also impact and um, the way that an individual begins to disconnect and how they begin to perceive themselves in comparison to other individuals within the company as well. Um, in the early parts of the book, their compensation is described as vital, vicious, and visible. And I really want to go along with these three things because I honestly think that this is um, the best way to describe compensation. So it is definitely vital to an organization. Compensation um, helps us understand the way that individuals are classified. It helps us um, give titles and understand job responsibilities and it is also a way to understand how responsibilities are delegated obviously based on different qualifications you will be receiving um different um responsibilities on certain things and then it also gives us a pay scale um it also makes sure that it is also important to remember that people are always looking to put themselves in the best possible um, position financially. So maintaining compensation high will also attract top talent. It is also important to realize that um, employee motivation will also be at an all-time high if the compensation shows that you're also valuing the individual and not only as workers but as human beings and that their input is taken seriously in compensation being high will also um, boost their loyalty they employees will want to work for somebody that they can be proud of that they can um by making sure that you have happy employees then that means that you're spending less money on constantly on a bad turnover and constantly having to train new employees and have a team to hire employees constantly. So these are only some of the vital things that compensation um, impacts in an organization. One of the reasons why I think that compensation can be very vicious is because there's a constant uh, struggle with competition. It can be very detrimental to the organization's um the organization's environment. Um, it is important to remember that competition is different amongst different people. And sometimes uh, competition can lead to unethical behaviors in some because of the constant pressure to um, put out certain numbers or have certain events become better. And it is not always a positive thing, although it can be healthy to have um, a healthy level of competition. It is not always and for everyone the best way to attain maximum amount of results in an organization. There are definitely those people that um, lose their sense of creativity when they're under pressure or they begin uh, to show their excitement in negative aspects and just become very bad sports about winning or being better than others. So it is not necessarily always an, a good thing to have compensation be such a um, determining factor in the organization's stability. And it is also one of those things that you can't hide. Compensation is very visible. Um, it begins to have people lose focus because they are so focused on earning a certain amount of money or reaching that maximum amount of compensation that they begin to belittle each other or form alliances and try to be more likable and not really show their true colors. So it is a very, very visible thing amongst peers. And like I mentioned before, it does not necessarily mean it can be healthy or unhealthy, but it can it will definitely impact the organization. I am currently working at um one of the local cities and I have been there for almost two years now. I do have a bachelor's degree and compensation for me at the moment 
means completely different things that it means to my peers and I have noticed that for about six months now. For me, I have weighed the amount of experience that I have gained and the skills that I have attained by, with working with the department to be far more valuable than the amount of money that I am getting paid. I have noticed that about 80% of my supervisors don't have the amount of education that I have and that they use me for um, a lot of ideas and I do bring a lot of uh, different outlooks from my previous work experience to the table and they enjoy that but obviously I have not been able to move up as quickly and for me that is okay but I have noticed that for my peers it is beginning to cause a very strenuous uh, relationship between the organization and them. A lot of them are starting to deny a lot of projects because they feel that they are not being um, paid enough and for me again it is not about getting paid enough. It's getting my hands on as much as many projects as I can so that I am more of a well-rounded individual so that when I am done with my master's, I can go on and have experience. If I'm applying for other jobs, have far more experience and know how to do a little bit of everything where my coworkers, I think, are very, very focused on this is as far as they want to go and they want to stay here, but they're not seeing the growth. So I think that compensation is also something that although the organization does have a handle on does not necessarily uh, mean it is a make it or break it factor for the individual because even though my coworkers and I are getting paid the exact same amount of money. We are on completely different positions in our life where I'm a little bit more flexible with my uh, source of payment and they are not. So my priorities outweigh uh, monetary compensation because I feel like my vision, my skills, and my education are all in are all in alignment with my organization where others might not see that. In alignment. Now, the expectancy theory is defined more of uh, or defines more of the efforts that will lead to good performance and um, that good performance will lead to rewards and that those rewards will be attractive. So I think for me, ex the expectancy theory definitely does come into play because I put as much effort as I can into all the projects, all my assignments, all my classes, um, creating relationships with um, people in my organization. And I have high hopes that my performance will lead to um, different positions in the organization and that I will once be, one day become a supervisor maybe. So I think that both theories can be used to define a subordinate, but they can also be defined, um, used to define so that is my take on both um, theories and my experience and this week's topic on compensation. So I will see you guys next week.